Imagine that your favorite pair of jeans had a hole in it that wasn't put there for fashion. You could simply fix it by patching in some new fabric over the hole. But what if something goes wrong with one of the 24,000 jeans in your body? Before we go to jeans, let me tell you about DNA. DNA is the blueprint of life. Like a recipe book, it holds the instructions for making all the proteins in our bodies. Only parts of DNA make proteins, which are called genes. DNA or genes are first converted to RNA by the process of transcription in the nucleus. The RNA then goes to the cytoplasm where it is then used as a template to make the proteins. So our DNA is very important. If our DNA is damaged, then it will make the wrong proteins. And if the proteins are defective, the person will develop diseases. But how can DNA become defective? There are mainly two ways. Firstly, the person is born with healthy DNA, but is exposed to a toxic environmental conditions, such as Tabasco smoke, UV light damage, high energy radiation like x-rays, and high amounts of air pollution. All of these conditions will damage the DNA. However, our cells are very smart and 98% of the time they will repair the DNA. But if a person is constantly exposed to these conditions, the DNA can become permanently damaged. The second reason for defective genes can be just that the person inherited it from their parents. For example, cystic fibrosis. In this diagram, both parents have one healthy CFTR gene and one defective CFTR gene, so they're both fine. But out of their four children, one child gets both defective genes and he develops cystic fibrosis. There is no cure for cystic fibrosis other than to replace one or both of the defective genes with healthy ones. And this process is called gene therapy. As you see here, in this case, disease cells do not have gene X, but if you add this gene, they now become healthy. This is gene therapy in a nutshell. This sounds very interesting, but how do you do it? Scientists create genetically modified genes that suit the patient's needs. You cannot give this altered DNA as an injection because it will degrade in the blood and never reach the cell. So we need to package it in a vector and safely deliver it inside the cell. For this purpose, the scientists use viral packaging material. The DNA is packaged inside a viral carrier vehicle which serves two purposes. First, it keeps the DNA safe. And second, viruses are very good at sneaking into and infecting cells. So as the virus reaches the cell, it penetrates it, goes inside, and safely delivers the DNA to the cell's nucleus. This new DNA makes the RNA, and the RNA creates the proteins, and the cells become healthy but after all of this, you might be like, Sonal, this all sounds nice on rice paper, but does it even work? To that, I have to say, in March of 2017, researchers announced that a teenage boy in France has been cured of sickle cell disease after receiving an experimental gene therapy developed by Bluebird Bio. A four-year-old girl named Ashtani de Silva underwent treatment for a rare genetic disease that weakened her immune system greatly. The treatment improved her immune system and allowed her to live a normal life. In conclusion, all of these things are very exciting. However, there are still a few technical challenges left. The main issue is to deliver the gene to the right location in the body. Also, the body should keep the new genes for a long term by replicating them like normal DNA. They must also ensure that the new genes are precisely controlled by the body. It's a solution worth exploring because gene therapy could not only cure a variety of different genetic diseases,
but it could also give a big kick in the pants to cancer.